guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the five perfumes I'm going to be wearing most this fall or autumn if you're in the UK. I know the seasons are going to start changing now, which is so exciting. I'm definitely a winter baby. I love the winter. I love autumn. I love everything leading up to Christmas. It's my favourite time of year from September to December. And I am so happy it's September, so I can now start getting into my fall or autumn winter clothing and layer and spray on really beautiful perfumes and fragrances. If you didn't know, I'm quite the perfume lover. Um, I have maybe about 20 perfumes in my collection and I do try to rotate them as regularly as possible so that I can get through all of them. I do often get asked if I've used up any of my perfumes and I haven't, but I am gonna start when I buy perfume in the future buying smaller bottles because there's no way you need 100 ml of a perfume if you switch up your perfumes as much as I do. And that's definitely something I've learned, but I do love collecting perfume. It's the one thing I'm allowing myself to still collect um, because I just adore fragrance and I adore scent. There's something about relating a scent to a time of year that just gets me really excited and nostalgic and I absolutely love that. For me, scent is all about expression and memories. Tying a memory behind a scent is incredible. So yeah, love perfume, love this time of year. So I've kind of looked through my perfume collection over the past week and I've been thinking about what perfumes I think I'll probably gravitate towards most during the full time or the autumn time. Um, I've picked five, I'm gonna talk through um, those five with you today. Now, I live in London, so if you're in a city like me where the beginning of um, autumn or fall is gonna be maybe a little bit on the warm side and then towards the end of fall it gets really crisp and the air gets crisp, that's what it's like in London, so maybe it's like that in the city you're from. I know New York can be like that. Um, so I'm gonna go through the perfumes in the order that the season would be, so some things are gonna be quite light and fresh to start off for fall and then towards the end of fall and when it's getting more towards winter, things get a bit more intense and a bit more sexy. So definitely gonna be going through those kind of scents today. If you wanna see what the five I think I'm gonna be gravitating towards over the next season are, keep watching. Okay, first up I need to talk about Commodity Bergamot. Bergamot is one of my favorite, favorite fragrances. A lot of brands do different types of bergamot and I often like all of them. But the one um, that I just love in my collection is by Commodity. It's very, very citrusy and sweet. It's very refreshing. It's just so freshing and citrusy. And I think that combination makes this a good perfume for spring, summer and fall because the lightness of it and the freshness of it, it gives you that bounce in your step. You still feel fresh and light, like the sun's still gonna be out, it still might be warm. This isn't gonna be overpowering if you get hot or anything like that. It's actually a great daily fragrance. So if you were looking for a fragrance which you could wear every single day, this is one that I would recommend. I don't think it's one you would get bored of. I also don't think it would offend anyone. I think it's a very friendly fragrance. A lot of people are gonna like this one. Um, and I just think, seeing as I've been wearing it all spring and summer this year, I know I'm gonna reach for it at the beginning of autumn because yeah, it's just so light and fresh and citrusy. And I think in London at the moment, a lot of the leaves are starting to fall and get a little bit crunchy, even though it's still kind of warm outside. And this is just so great for that. So yeah, the one that I'm definitely gonna be wearing like at the start of this season is Bergamot. Mm, love this. Okay, so next up, as it starts to get a little bit cooler, but to be honest, I think this is an all year round fragrance anyway. This was the fragrance that got me started on obsessing and loving fragrances. This is um, by Rido's Gypsy Water. The scent on this, it's definitely unisex. I think men can carry this off really well. Um, works great on women too. I think if you are really, really stuck in your labels, it might be a bit more feminine than masculine, but I definitely think men can wear this. In fact, all of the perfumes I'm gonna be talking about today are 100% unisex. I believe everything should be unisex anyway, but for me, I don't really like overly feminine in quotation mark perfumes. They just don't suit my personality. So all of these perfumes are kind of for everybody and offer something a bit different as well. But Gypsy Waters by Rido, this, as I said, is the perfume that got me started on obsessing over fragrances. And every time I smell this, it's like being given a hug. It's so warm. There's berry, mo berry notes in there. There's vanilla. I think there's sandalwood as well. And I'm a huge fan of woody fragrances. This doesn't smell woody though. It's just very creamy and warm and there's a little bit of sweetness, but it's not sickly. It's one of the most perfect fragrances. I don't think I would ever not wear this. And that is a bold statement from me, but for me, Gypsy Water, it's just full of memories. I first started wearing it when I went to New York a couple years ago and it always makes me think of New York, which Manhattan is 
one of my favourite cities in the world that I've visited so far, of course. This is just so, I think I'm gonna wear this today. The, the smell of it is just so comforting to me. Oh, it's incredible. I really love this. Something to mention about Byredo is um, some people they don't say they don't last very well. I definitely think that can be the case. For me with gypsy water, I will be very generous when I put it on in the morning and I will also spray it on my skin and on my clothes. I find on clothes, perfume will last all day, sometimes two days if you didn't wash your clothing yet. Whereas on the skin, it can be a little bit, you know, four or five hours and you might only just smell it. Um, whereas if you spray quite a lot on the skin and on the clothes, it's gonna stick around with you all day. Again, this is a perfume that I don't think anyone would be offended by. I think most people would be very drawn to it. Beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Such just a classic from Byredo. Okay, moving on into more of the depth of fall. Um, I have to mention French Lover by Frederick Mal. Again, this is one of those perfumes that it doesn't matter when I smell it, what time of year, I feel excited by it. I've had this bottle for maybe a year now. I can't even remember when I bought this, guys. It was probably last fall I must have bought this, actually. French Lover, when you first smell it, it's very woody. To me, it almost, it's kind of green as well. It's like grassy and woody. To me, I think a really good way to describe French Lover by Frederick Mal is like an old book in a library plus some grass mixed in with it. I know that's not gonna sound very appealing to a lot of you, but when I first smelt this fragrance from the bottle without trying it on, I thought it was kind of intriguing. It's definitely a, a different fragrance. It was kind of one of the first fragrances that started taking me onto the wood woods kind of area of perfume, which I just, I love nearly all woods now. It, it's very rare for me to try a woody fragrance and not fall head over heels in love with it. And I definitely think French Lover was a big contribution to that. I'd say French Lover is also a really good option if you want to start getting into woody fragrances. This is a great starting fragrance for that. But as I said, when I first smelt it through the bottle, I wasn't blown away. And when I was speaking to the sales associate at Frederick Mao, she told me that for her, French Lover is a very personal fragrance. When she sprays it, she has a connection to it. She can't explain why, but she just loves it. And so her kind of talking about it like that made me think, well, I'll just try it on the skin and see how I go. I tried it on the skin and the rest is history. I fell madly in love. I've never smelt anyone wearing French Lover when I've been out in London or anywhere else. Some of my favourite perfumes, especially from niche brands, are things like Santel 33 by Le Labo, again Gypsy Water, and then again like um, Tier Noir from Le Labo is becoming incredibly popular as well. So those are three of my favourite fragrances that when I started wearing them were very niche, but they are being worn more. I continuously seem to walk past people wearing Santel 33 by Le Labo now, which I feel like is ruining the scent for me because I liked that it was so unique. But French Lover has that uniqueness. I have never smelled anyone wearing this. Um, and I think it is because it's quite a unique fragrance. If you want something that no one else is gonna be wearing this season, definitely check this one out. Don't give up on it just by smelling it in the bottle. Try it on the skin, even a few times. Sometimes with perfume, you have to try them on again and again, and your nose will kind of evolve to that taste of the fragrance. That's definitely something that can happen with this one, but it's just beautiful. As I said, it's kind of green and grassy, it's woody, it's still fresh. Um, it's probably more masculine than feminine, but I think it's beautiful on women, beautiful on men as well. So for me, this is something, again, I would wear all year, but mid-fall, I think it's just gonna be fantastic. Oh God, all of these perfumes are just making me so excited for colder months um, ahead when I can wear lots of layers, big coats. I wanna get a coat with a really big lapel collar. And I think these perfumes are just gonna go perfect to tie together those outfits that I have planned. Um, but the next one I wanna talk about is something that I just briefly mentioned. It's Le Labo's Tier Noir. I don't have the actual perfume bottle myself. What I do have is this sample size of it from Le Petit Lab Fragrances. Now, what Le, Le Petit Lab do is they sell you um, kind of travel um, um, sample sizes I think this might be like a five mil or maybe it's more maybe it's like a ten mil I can't remember how much this is but I'll link it down below if you're looking to try the Labo fragrances but you don't want to kind of splurge on the whole bottle because you're not sure how you're gonna like it these are great to go for they basically decant the perfume into this size bottle for you you can either keep it in your handbag or you can just try out the fragrance before you invest in the bottle but for me um, 
the reason I haven't bought a full-size tier noir yet is because my boyfriend has one. We're going to be moving in together next year and so I don't think we need to have double perfumes. It's just silly because we're going to obviously share lots of perfumes when we live together. So I literally, I hoard this. There's still perfume left in this and it's because every time I go to my boyfriend's house, the only thing I wear is tier noir. I just steal, steal it from him const constantly. It's just the most... Oh, Moorish fragrance. I think it kind of smells kind of plummy and spicy. I know it's got fig in there. If you're not fond of fig fragrances, you should still try Tier Noir by Le Labo out because it will blow you away. It will really blow you away. And again, I think this season it's one that's going to become even more popular, which I think is a shame. It takes the magic and the specialty out of it, but at the same time, it has full reason to be popular because the scent of it is incredible. As I said, it's very Moorish, it's sweet. It's perfect for when it starts to get a bit cooler at night, maybe even in the day when it's cooler outside. I've actually been wearing it for the past couple of weeks because I've been staying at my boyfriend's house a lot. And as, as I said, I just steal it and douse myself in it because I love it that much. This is one to try if you want to get into Le Labo fragrances as well, would highly recommend Tier Noir. And last but not least, for those times when it's extremely cold out, you're really feeling the fall, all the leaves have fallen off the trees, and you want something that's going to transition you into winter, Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Merle. This, again, is just one of the most incredible fragrances. I know I've mentioned Frederick Merle previously in this video. I'm a huge fan of Frederick Merle fragrances, um, you know, to begin with, but Portrait of a Lady was a game changer for me. It's a beautiful rose fragrance, but it's not your typical sickly feminine rose. It's sweet, but not sickly. It's more like a rosé wine rose. When you spray this on the skin, you can almost taste that rosé wine kind of, you know, that kind of taste in your mouth. It's just incredibly beautiful. Some of you have messaged me saying that you've tried this on my recommendation and you weren't keen, that's fine, you know, everyone has different tastes. But the majority of you who have tried this on my recommendation have sent me long messages saying how incredible it is. It's one to try, it's one to try on the skin, this is not cheap, this is probably my most expensive perfume I own. To me it is completely worth the money, the way I feel when I wear this perfume, it's just, honestly, again it's Moorish, but it's also mysterious, it's sweet. Let me smell it. It's got like a spice to it. Honestly, it's incredible. It's the perfect winter fragrance. It's the perfect fall to winter fragrance. I can't rave about this enough. And as I said, the amount of you who have messaged me saying you absolutely adore it. Yes, there's been some people who still don't like it and that is, you know, completely fine. Everyone has different tastes. But this is the kind of perfume which you could spray on in the morning and at night you will still smell it on your skin. Maybe a little bit goes a long way, but if you put quite a few spritzers on, you're not going to be overpowered. I also don't think this would offend anyone once it was on your skin. I just think it's beautiful, it's mysterious, it's very sexy, and it is very full winter. Oh, I love this perfume. I actually wore it the other day. We had a cold day here in London, it was raining. And I haven't worn this for quite some time now, literally since last winter. And I sprayed it on and all day I was just like smelling myself, just breathing in as much of me as I could because incredible. So there we have it guys, those are the five fragrances I'm going to be kind of leaning towards and gravitating towards this fall. I hope you've enjoyed this video, if you want me to do this again during winter time maybe we can go into more winter fragrances which I just adore. Definitely let me know, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below what perfume you reach for this time of year. I always love getting recommendations from you guys. I'll see you in the next one and yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Bye guys!